She'd been with her father and just getting back from Alabama. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, as we enter this worship experience, allow your Shekinah glory to fall afresh on us on today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us on today. Feed us, Holy Spirit, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you honor and praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, the humble share, hear thereof, and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with the biggest sign of praise and worship that you, however you choose to worship God on today, just take that opportunity to do so at this time. If you just want to wave your hands and tell the Lord, thank you, you do that. If you just want to jump on your feet and tell the Lord thank you, you can do that. If you want to take a victory lap in this place for how God has kept you in 2022 and allowed you to be in 2023, you can do that right now. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome all our visitors and guests who may be worshiping with us for the first or second or even third time here at SCBC, we thank God for you and your attendance on today. If you are worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for you. It is not by coincidence that you are in this sanctuary on today. We want you to make your place of home, your place of worship on today. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Barlow, and the entire SNBC family, we welcome you to the sanctuary of praise. Amen. Put your hands together for our visitors and guests. You're so welcome to this place. Amen. Any blessed people in the house on today? Come on, church. Don't fool me. I said anybody know that you are blessed on today. Amen. Amen. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Amen. Listen, there are several ways you can give here at SNBC. You can give through Cash App. You can give through Givelify. You can give through PayPal, or you can mail your tithing offering to the church. You can even drop your tithing offering in the boxes behind you to your left and to your right before you leave worship today if you choose to do so. We know that God is faithful. We know the Lord is a provider. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. We thank you for your tithing offering. We thank you for tithing offering in obedience. Amen. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Midnight hour. When you were asleep last night, God was working the night shift. He was moving some things around for you. Prayers were being answered that you prayed a long time ago. And how many know that God's going to turn it around? Come on. Late in the midnight.
Come on, everybody. Late in the midnight. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. And around. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. And around. Come on, and around. And around. And around. He turned it around. the devil amen amen the devil is defeated you have victory in Jesus amen amen what a blessing it is to be able to give amen and we know that God always blesses those who cheerfully give amen Amen. Let us now continue to remain standing as we prepare to recite our vision statement with clarity and with conviction on today. Our vision statement reminds us, if you're worshiping with us for the first or second time, it reminds us of who we are as a local church. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. We see people worshiping, praising, and serving him. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. We see God's principles at work in every arena of life. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we see transformation and let it start with me. Put your hands together for our vision statement on today. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalm 16 verses 1 through 11. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Hear the word of the Lord on today. Keep me safe, O God, for I've come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. Is that your testimony on today? The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in their sacrifices or blood or even speak the names of their gods. Little G. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The word of God for the people of God and God's people said together, thanks be unto God. Amen. We'll be blessed with a fervent prayer by our very own Elder Bruce Hams at this time. Our Lord and our God, we come to you this morning, first of all, saying, Lord, that if there's anything that will block us from communicating with you, yes, yes, yes. in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you remove it right now. Yes, yes. Because, Lord, we humbly bow before you this morning. First of all, thanking you. Thanking you for everything you've done in the past, the present, and even the future. But, oh God, while we're here this day, we continue to ask for your grace and your mercy, and especially your guidance. 
Lord, I don't have to remind you that there's so much going on in this world today. But we're reminded of that old song, Precious Lord.
on somebody if you know that name Jesus give him praise in this place Waymaker Lily of the Valley Bright and Morning Star Wheel in the middle of a wheel a mother to the motherless a father to the fatherless Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Shalom. Do you know him? Jesus. Come on, do you know him? Jesus. Early in the morning, Jesus. In the late in the midnight hour, Jesus. In the noonday, Jesus. Come on. If he's in bread on your table, say it, Jesus. If he's been your friend when you didn't have a friend, Jesus. When your heart was broken, he was your lover, Jesus. Yeah, 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 Jesus. Bless his Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy. We love you, God, because you first loved us. When we weren't thinking about you, you were always thinking about us. Have you ever been in a place where you didn't know how you were going to make it? I just want to talk to my real folk. Y'all that are super spiritual, y'all just stand to the side. Let me talk to the real folk. And you didn't know what you were going to do. And the Lord stepped in and did it. You didn't know how you were going to pay your bills. But instead of getting calls about debts, you were getting mail with refund checks and all kind of credits. Yes, Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised, church. Just take a moment and look back over your life to see all that God has done for you. We owe him praise and worship. Praise is not only what we do, it's who we are. We all worship. We all praise. What I do. Praise is what I do. Everybody lift your voice. Praise is what I do. Thank you, Lord, for moving in this place. I feel your presence in this place, Lord. 
Praise is what I do. Come on, y'all. Praise is what I do. When I want to be close to you, this is what I do. If you want to be close to the Lord, learn how to praise and worship. Come on, everybody. Praise is what I do, yeah. Reach deep down inside and find something on the inside that'll let you praise him. If you can't open your mouth, you can just wave your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, worship him with the fruit of your lips. Your breakthrough is in this place. Praise his word, I do. Father, touch this servant that you have called to shepherd this flock. Anoint him afresh. Give him preaching power. God, touch our hearts that the word might fall on good ground, that it might yield forth in its season. We thank you, Lord, for what the word of God will do in this place that you would do through the man of God. Strengthen him empower him fuel him God that he might only speak what you've given him to say we give you thanks and praise this day in Jesus name amen church amen certainly we are thankful we are appreciative amen for this praise team put your hands together for them we thank god for our musicians it's good to see jermaine back amen amen good to see him back with us we thank god for him I am so appreciative for what the Lord continues to do. It's one thing for someone to have done something for you. Another to expect that someone will do something for you. But it's a blessing when there is consistency in your life. What a person continues to do. And not only will have they done it on yesterday, but they're doing it on today. And that's the type of God that we serve, a God that is continuous, working miracles in our life. I am happy this morning. I brought my walking cane to church this morning. Literally thought that I'm going to have to use it to get up this morning. I practiced all last night in my mind. How will I use it to get up? Uh, but God is so good. Amen. So good. Amen. So good. I had surgery on Tuesday. I drove myself to the doctor. My wife wanted to go. I said, no, I go. I told my doctor that I wouldn't, didn't want to be put asleep. I can tolerate the pain. Yes, don't put me to sleep. He, he did not put me to sleep. He did it loca and it seated on my hand. 
So I walked to the surgery and walked out of the surgery room on my own. Amen. <laughs> drove myself to be operated on and drove myself back home after I was operated on. Amen. That's the type of God we serve. Amen. That's the type of God we serve. Amen. And I don't know what happened to my, but my foot, uh, nerves went bad in it uh, Friday. Started on Wednesday. And I literally could not walk on Friday and Saturday. And usually I do all the driving, so, but I told my wife um, yesterday, I'll get you out of the country to the interstate. I'm going to let you drive from there on. <laughs> And so I got out of the country to the NSA. She did all the driving. But God is so good. I'm not going to hold you long today. And the Lord has put a word in my spirit I want to share with you very briefly. Uh, I love uh, our ministry there at Wedgwood Towers. And, uh, and I love going there every Monday night once a month. And it was there in that meeting on last Monday, or the first Monday of this month, rather, uh, that God allowed me to share with them uh, something I want to share with you today. Uh, we do a teaching ministry there, uh, but I want to share with you today what the Lord put on my heart there. Because God is speaking to us. One of the things that Isaiah says in the 43rd chapter around verse 10, he says that God has chosen us to know him and to believe in him. And that's in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter around verse 10. The Lord says, I have chosen you to know me and to believe me. And you can't know a person if you don't spend any time with that person. I need to say that again. You can't know a person if you don't spend any time with the person. And you can't really know God if you don't spend any time with God. You need to spend some time in prayer. Spend some time meditating. But most of all, you need to spend some time in the word of God. Because what we know about God, God has revealed it in his word. Amen. And I know that we don't use the old Bibles anymore. Uh, but get on your cell phone this morning. I'm going to preach this morning from, amen, Ephesians, the first chapter. Get on your cell phone because I guarantee you that I'm not going to be able to give you all that's in the word. And the Holy Spirit is going to enlighten your mind for you to see what I have not seen. That's, how, that's the type of God we serve. You see, God does not give any one person all the insight in his word. If I'm learning anything as I have gotten older, is that we need to get the people of God back in his word. Amen. In his word. It's not our high fives going to save you. It's not our, our sins that are going to save you. But what's going to save you is that you are acquainted with the word of God. And that you know how to utilize the Holy Spirit in your moments and in your situation where the word of God can deal with you and speak life in your life. And so allow me to look at this particular word. We're going to read from uh, the New King James. I believe I have verse 3, 2, 6. And uh, it says... Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places 
in Christ. Accordingly, he has chosen us in him. Listen, before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame before him, what? In love. They say in deeds, but say what? In love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved. This morning, I just want to take a subject. Take your position. Take your position. Let us pray. Father God, I come now in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. And I come, O oh Lord, to thank you again for all that you have done. And Father God, I pray now that you allow the Holy Spirit to minister unto your servant. And that you allow me to proclaim a word that will be edifying for your people. And it will be glorifying unto you. And Father God, help me now to do what I need to do in this moment that you will be blessed. And this I do ask in the name of Jesus the Christ and for his sake, amen and amen. This particular epistle is written by the apostle of Paul. It's believed that the apostle at this time was in a Roman jailhouse but even in confinement Paul found a way to continue to spread the gospel in other words whatever your challenge may be you still need to find a way to get the good news to somebody. Paul, in his confinement, did not allow his situation to overcome the purpose for which he was called. I say so often, all of us have been called for a purpose. We may not have the voice of an angel. But God has called you to do something. And whatever God has called you to do, don't allow your circumstances to overrule your calling in God. Paul here, as he write to this church that he's very familiar with, the church there in Ephesus, a church, a territory of pagans. But even in the midst of pagans, Paul allows the word of God to go forth. What I'm saying, amen, that it bothers me when I hear folks saying that because there are rules in schoolhouses, that does not allow teachers to lead your child or my grandkids in prayer. That prayer has been taken out of the school. The only way prayer can be taken out of the school is people stop praying. You better listen to me. A whole lot of folks are looking for excuses to not to look unto the God that's brought them and to the God that has kept them. I told my children, amen, whenever you go in the schoolhouse, 
sit down by yourself and have a little talk with the Lord. You don't need the teacher to lead you in prayer. You ought to know how to pray for yourself. You don't need the preacher to pray for you. You ought to know how to pray for yourself. And if that's not prayer in your house, don't put it on your neighbor house. Look at your house. Paul, as he write this letter to the Ephesian people, he writes this letter to give them strength. The purpose of the Ephesian letter is to strengthen the young Christian there in Ephesus. And my sister and my brother, all of us need strength on this journey. Life has a way of beating you up. Life has a way of sometimes even knocking you down to the ground. But there is strength in the word of God. Somebody can testify to the reason I'm here today because I read God's word. And it was God's word that got me up out of my circumstances. It was God's word that put running in my feet, put jaw clapping in my hand. It was God's word that turned me around. Somebody here today can testify that I was going in the wrong direction. But the guy looked upon the pages of the antiquity of God's word. And it was in God's word that I made up my mind I was going in the wrong direction. God's word did for me what mama could not do for me. It's, in hours, it's when you read the word of God that you'll find strength. And Paul takes time in his prison confinement to, amen, to write a letter back to the church where he administered, write a letter back to the church where he is started to say, your strength is in the word of God. And so this particular epistle is written for the purpose to encourage the people. It's interesting that as Paul writes this letter, he spent verse 1 and verse 2, amen, introducing himself again to the people. He says to them, I, I am Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. In other words, what I, I, what I did and who I am is not because of something I wanted to do, but it's what God wanted me to do. Whatever you are doing, you'll be doing because God wants you to do it, not because what your neighbor wants you to do, not what your friends want you to do. You'll be saying, it's what I'm doing, what God wants me to do. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It was not my intent to be where I am and what I have been doing for my life. I was on my way really down to the massacre, to the persecutor church, but somewhere between the massacre, God stopped me on a road and he blinded me and I heard a word from heaven. Why persecute me? I am what I am because of God. And then he says to the saints which are at Ephesus. I need to let somebody know today you are a saint of God. You're not a saint because of where you come to worship. You're not a saint of God because of what you wear or don't wear. But you're a saint of God because you believe in the shedded blood of Jesus Christ. That's what makes you a saint of God. Because you have placed your hope and your faith in the Jesus that died and carried his blood. Spray man was spilled for your sins and my sin. And because you believe in him, that makes you a saint of God. And all of us are saints of God. We've been called for a purpose. To the saints which are at Ephesus. And then after he introduced himself in verse 1 and verse 2. He said, blessed be the God and father of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Blessed be good God Almighty, the, 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 the God and father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Y'all bear with me today. I want to preach today. I want to preach the word. Amen. I don't give you a lot of high five. I want you to look at the word because that's something the word. 
You see, you see, there's a lot of critics, amen, that criticize Christian folks. And when we don't know the word of God, folks can, amen, get us confused. Y'all better listen to me. I hate to say this, but I believe there's more confused missionary Baptists and Baptist folks anywhere in the world. Because most folks know what they believe and why they believe it. Amen. But sometimes we don't know what we believe and why we believe it. Look here. The Bible says, he said, blessed be, amen, the God and Father. You see, the only time that you and I see the word Father related to God is in the New Testament. And the reason we see it in the New Testament, because God now has a son. The incarnated God is his son. And so, amen, the, the writer used, amen, God the Father. And that's why we say God is our Father, amen. Because God now had Jesus Christ, the son, needed a father, amen. Amen. And so God the Father. But if I give you a little, little help here, John says that the same God that is the Father, amen, is the same, the Son is the same God. Amen, amen. For what? John says what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word what? Was God. Amen. Y'all better get it. Y'all better get it. Amen. And so God Amen. Sometimes it's father because the son needs a father. Every son, every daughter needs a father. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all get it going home. Amen. And he said, blessed be the God and the father of our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ. Now, I, 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 I can't keep you long. Amen. I know y'all don't want to stay here long. Amen. Amen. But I want to help us. Because it's interesting in the word that Paul used here. He said, bless, be. Now, that word be is what we call a, a, B, a, a B verb, and a B verb shows be in. And be in is something that's always continuous. It's a continuous state of being. The word bless here is a compound word in the Greek. The first part of it means well or, or good. The last part of that compound word means to speak. And so the word here bless means to speak well. Speak well. Can I help somebody? And that's why I says to you, amen, don't, amen, your praise should not stop at the end of the benediction. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody better get that. Amen. See, your praise, my praise, should not stop at the end of the benediction. Because Paul said that your praise ought to be continuous. Can I help somebody? Amen. Amen. You don't have to wave your hand all the time to praise God. Amen. When I was a boy coming up in the church, we had what we called bench walkers. Amen. And when they got full, Bruce, amen, you, you've seen them, amen, they walk the benches. But you don't have to walk the benches, amen, to praise God. Because when you leave here, there's no benches, to, amen, to walk. But if you read the word of God, if praise is to be continuous and praise means to speak well, you can leave and say, God will make a way. When you see your neighbor, I was down but not out. God picked me up. Somebody can say, I was going in the wrong direction, but God turned me around. That's giving praise to God. Don't let your praise stop at the end of the benediction. Amen. Too many church folks, amen, you praise him here, but you won't praise him out there. Amen. He don't need your praise in here as much as he needs your praise out there. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all get it sooner or later. Amen. The world need to know that there are some folks that love the Lord and not a shame of God know where they go. I'm going to tell somebody what Jesus did for me, what is in the church or outside of the church. Amen. So don't, amen, amen. Your praise should not stop, amen, at the end of benediction. Then he says here in the word, 
I'm in the word that day. He says here in the word, he says, with, with whom uh, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, let's be real. Knowing Jesus Christ is not a guarantee you're not going to have to be operated on it. Oh, help me. Let's, let's be real. Knowing Jesus Christ is, is not a guarantee you're not going to need medication before you die. Said we met a lady at your aunt Fume yesterday, 88 years of age. My wife called me and she said, you believe she 88? I said, well, you know, you know, they, we got to say it, something don't crack, amen. And uh, I, I, I gonna tell you, uh, Sean, you've been around enough, you've been around us enough. We got a saying among us that black don't crack. <laughs> and so I said, okay. Uh, that was no big deal. But then she got, she started praising God. But not only am I not 88, but I never had no medication. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But that's not, but knowing God, amen, and, 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 and being blessed to God is not an indication that you're never not going to need medication. But here it is. He says, he says what? who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Can I help somebody? Heavenly places are not limited to the sanctuary. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You see, heavenly places, the prosperity of God's blessing is not limited to the sanctuary. Y'all, anybody happy about that? Let me say it again. Let me say it again. The prosperity, because this word blessing here, when you use the blessing here in the Greek, it means pros- to be prosper. And so in other words, prosperity of God's blessing is not limited to the sanctuary. Y'all, anybody glad? Anybody glad? That, that, do you, amen, that, anybody glad that God's uh, pros- prosperity is not limited to you coming to church on Sunday morning? Anybody glad? Amen. Anybody, are, are you glad? Can I help somebody? Amen. So God's prosperity is not limited to the sanctuary. Amen. When you go to work, amen, on your job, if you go to work with the mindset that I'm going to do right by my boss, man, God said, I'm going to bless you. Amen. When you go to schoolhouse and you say, I'm going to schoolhouse to learn, God going to bless you. Whatever you do anything in the will of God, that is a heavenly place. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. And so I'm glad today that, amen, you ought to be happy today that the prosperity of God blessing is not limited to the sanctuary. Oh, y'all better get help. Oh, man, y'all better help me up here. Amen. Y'all better help me. Amen. When I'm walking down the street, amen. In my, somebody, I'm, when I'm walking down the street, I talked this morning on the Sunday school, as fear not, amen. I don't fear nothing. You see, I don't, I, don't, I don't choose to live my life in fear. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know why? Because I know the prosperity of God's blessing is not limited to the sanctuary. Preacher, he can, he can put an angel around me when two thugs behind me. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And he can separate, the angel will separate me from the thugs behind me. Somebody can testify, I was going down the street and there was thugs ready to get ready to mock me. But they heard an unknown voice and they turned and went away. That was God said, I'm going to bless you even that you're in the street. I'm glad that my blessings are not limited to the sanctuary. Good God Almighty. He says... He says, he says, he says in, in the word of God, he says, he says, according as he has chosen us. Listen, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Let me tell you something, saints. God had already chosen you before he made the world. If I was in the Primitive Baptist Church and I came around the Primitive Baptist, I've been blessed to be in a whole lot of denominations, but I'm still a Baptist. They're going to die, Baptist, because your nomination is not going to save you. Let me say that. Your nomination is not going to save you. If I was in the Primitive Baptist Church, I would say it like this, uh, Ella, Ella, uh, Ella, before the, the light zigzagged across the sky, before there was a when or a where, God 
love me. Yeah, and I'm a genuine thoroughbred. I want you to know that. But I want you to know, amen, before, amen, before the world came into existence, God has chosen you. God had predestined you to be set of where you are. He knew that you would be set in where you are. I'm glad that God, amen, loved me so much. Amen. He made a way for me before I knew I needed a way. Help me, Holy Ghost. God chose you. You didn't choose God. Somebody don't get it twisted. God chose you. You didn't choose God. I need to say it again. God chose you. You didn't choose God. Don't get it twisted. Don't go out here and think you, you Mr. Big Stuff. Amen. You ain't, no, you ain't nothing. Amen. I ain't nothing. Amen. But God chose me. Amen. I'm glad that he chose me. He chose me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He chose me through the sacrifice of his own son. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Anybody want to thank him today? Anybody want to thank him today? Thank him, amen, for amen. Thank him, amen, that he loved me, amen, that he chose me, amen. Help me, Holy Ghost, amen. And then he says here in the word, amen, he says, he says here, amen, before he chose us to be what? Holy and without blame before him. In love. Amen. Can I help somebody? I'm glad that God didn't choose me based on what I'm going to do. I said what I'm going to do. I've done enough. I've done enough. But I'm glad he didn't choose me based upon what I'm going to do and what I have done. But God chose us what? In love. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He did not choose us based upon how he thought we might act. Oh, the Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. That's the word. That's word. That's word. Amen. And so he chose us in him in love. And then the verse says, having predestinated us unto adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself. Here's the point. You don't have to try to be what you are not. <laughs> Can I help somebody? You don't have to try to be what you not. It'd be a whole lot of happy folks if they quit trying to be what they not. Oh, help me. It, it, that makes sense to y'all? That'd be a whole lot of happy folks if they would quit trying to be what they are not. Amen. Amen. So you don't have to be. And you don't have to try to be what you're not. Here, 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 here what the God was putting in my mind. You see, everybody wants to be an Israelite today. Everybody wants to be an Israelite today. You see, that, that, we read in the Bible, they are his chosen people. And so everybody want to be an Israelite. I'm Israelite. Everybody wants some DNA. Everybody got, I got some Israelite. Well, you ain't got to quit. Stop, stop lying. You don't have to tell that lie. You can, you can say that lie when you need that lie. That's some lies you might, might need, amen. I'm not telling y'all a lie, but, they, but uh, practicality, you might need a lie every now and then. Now, I'm not telling you a lie, am I? <laughs> Some lies you can say. <laughs> I ain't got to tickle myself up here. <laughs> Here's the point. Let's get back to the word. You don't have to try to be what you're not. Look what the word said. The word says it like this. Having been predestined, that God had already determined us to be adopted children. Now, here's the thing. When somebody adopts a child, they have the same privilege as the birth child. God said, no, I, I didn't call your, your nation as my chosen people. But what I have done, I have adopted you. And the same privilege that I extended to them are the same privilege that you're going to receive. Good God Almighty. Good God, man. And I'll be shouting right there. 
the same privilege, the same benefits that I belabor them with are the same thing you're going to receive because I have adopted you. And matter of fact, I adopted you before I even called them. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Can I say it again? Before God chose Israel as his people, if you read this text here, he had already adopted the saints of God through the blood of Jesus Christ before he called the Israelites to be his chosen people. So you don't have to what? You don't have to try to be what you are not. Help me, Holy Ghost. And let me just try to close this message today to help somebody. If you are in Christ, you are somebody. Do I need to say it again? If you are in Christ, you are somebody. You may not be uh, like a superstar, but you're in Christ. You're somebody. You may not have money as some folks have, but you're in Christ. You're somebody. You may not have, amen, a mansion like some folks have here on earth, but you're in Christ. You're somebody. That's why the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and let the king of glory come in. Do I hear somebody? Say, I am somebody. And the reason I am somebody, because I've been adopted by God, the creator of everything. I am somebody, because I, I am the brother of Jesus the Christ, the only son of God. I am somebody. And I want to leave you here at Jesus as he gathered all of his disciples together. And he said to them, all power has been given unto me. Power in heaven and power in earth. He said to them, there, go therefore and teach all nations baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I said the sermon today was to tell you to take your position. And when I read that text, Jesus is saying to those boys, take your position. Anybody that know me know I don't know nothing about football. But I know one thing, everybody has a position. Everybody cannot be the quarterback. Everybody cannot be the corner. Everybody cannot be the tight end. But whatever your position, you ought to take your position. Good God Almighty, take your position, Second Baptist. Take your position. Don't be the tail, but be the head. Do I have a wizard this morning? Take your position. Take your position because one died one Friday. He died on a hill called Calvary. One Friday, they stretched him wide. One Friday, they pierced him in his side. The Bible said that blood and water come running down. But that blood washed away my sin. The songwriter, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Take your position. Because that, that third and point of day, he got up with all power in his hand. Take your position. When you leave here today, don't leave here with your head hanging down. But Lisa said, Lord, I'm going to take my position. I don't know what your position is, but you take your position. Look at your name and say, take your position. Take your position. Take your position in the world. Take your position as a leader and not a follower. Take your position. Take your position. May God bless you. And may God keep you. But take your position. Whatever your position is. Everybody cannot be the quarterback. But that's a position for everybody on the team. Take your position. May God bless you. May God keep you. The word for the day. Take your position. May God bless you. And may God keep you. Here's my prayer.
Lord, we thank you that you have reminded us that we need to take our position. So God, give us the boldness to do just that. God, we thank you for the man of God and the word of God. Pour back into him as he has graciously poured into us. Restore him, rejuvenate him, renew him afresh. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would stand all over this place as we prepare right now for the invitation of Christian discipleship. This is the response to the gospel that you at this time can accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can become a part of this local fellowship here at SNBC. This is the opportunity for you to come to know the Lord. If you're worshiping, if you're worshiping with us virtually, you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ right where you are by saying, Lord, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sin. You'll be saved right then. Wherever you are, you can come right now. We want you to know that you know that you know Jesus for yourself. When this song is over, we want you to know that Jesus lives in your heart. You can come at this time, wherever you are. You can come to Jesus. When the song is over, when the, song is over, when the music stops, when the music stop, do you know? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Wherever you are, you can come. When life gets troubled, when your life the Lord wants to be a part. Jesus still that's good news. Do you know? Do you know? Wherever you are, does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Do you believe this morning? Do you believe that he was born? The gospel, do you believe that he died, church? Do you believe that he died? Online, do you believe that do the blood that came up from his side on Calvary was shed for you, was shed for me? Do you believe that his love? That love that adopted you can save you right where you are. Do you know today? Does he live? Wherever you are, you can come. Put your hands together for this amazing worship service on today. Before we dismiss worship, there is a very, very important announcement we want to get out to all the men of the church. There is a brief meeting for all the men of SNBC downstairs in the fellowship hall with Elder Bruce Hams. All men, right after service, please come downstairs so we can meet briefly with the leader of our men's ministry, Elder Hams. Amen? Amen. And for you all that attended discipleship class, be sure to do your homework. Amen. If you did not attend discipleship class, please see me so you can provide me your email address so I can send you your homework assignment. Amen. Amen. There will be a quiz next first Sunday in discipleship class. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. Amen. Thank you.
his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day in Jesus' name.